Welcome to Comet Computer Private Limited e-learning program of hardware networking. We are discussing about uh, motherboard technologies. We have completed the part one discussion. Uh, we have seen about uh, motherboard, uh, the components, chipsets, and other uh, I/O ports. What is available? Uh, different types of bridges. So now we'll continue with the um, part two. So here um, we are seeing the uh, AMD motherboard. So all all motherboards and components what we have seen is from Intel. The 386, 486 is all the families. It is from Intel. The best comparator for uh, Intel is AMD, um, and uh, they have both processor and motherboards available. So in the initial stage, we have received a lot of complaints uh, uh, from the AMD systems like more heat dissipation and uh, performance degradation. But later, uh, those things of uh, those issues are resolved, and now if you see, uh, we get uh, more uh, uh, systems and uh, we get bulk orders from the organizations to uh, install the amd uh, systems like thousands of systems we are getting from the factory lenovo uh, dell they, they also go for i mean lenovo mainly lenovo is using uh, amd processor and uh, this thing uh, motherboard so the rate wise it is less compared to intel so anyway you can use both uh, for residential or uh, small development uh, side you don't uh, see any difference now with both the Uh, technologies available um next is uh, processor uh, cpu sockets okay so here um, you are seeing one of the uh, uh, processor with pins the pins are very soft and um, uh, it's like a stapler pin so you have to be very careful while um, inserting the pins the sockets are given example so you have different types of uh, 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 sockets available. One is the line grid array or uh, ZIF sockets. So we will see different types of um, uh, CPU sockets available. The first one is PGA. You are seeing the picture of the processor. Uh, uh, likewise, you will have uh, uh, holes in the uh, motherboard uh, socket. So you have to see uh, the position and uh, insert the processor very slowly. and um, you have to give a little push so that it will get seared properly the disadvantage here is um, if after 2 years or 3 years if at all you want to clean anything right so it will be very hard to remove them from the uh, socket and sometimes uh, when you use the uh, screw driver or tester to just um, uh, remove it it may damage your processor also that much tight it will become okay so that is a disadvantage of pj socket so different uh, version different time uh, we had different types of um, uh, arrays uh, available ppga fcpga cpga opga so uh, most of the cases what we used is a zip socket uh, zero insertion force you are seeing it in a blue color here so there is a lever available once you lift the lever the holes will get open up and um, how to find the position it is very important this written as a socket 2 here if you see the corners of this particular uh, holder in one corner you don't have any pins the same way the processor also designed so you have to match this one and just insert it it will get inserted and then using this lever you just lock the uh, socket that's it so your fixing of uh, processor is completed so that much easy so there is no force is required no you don't need to push anything little push is also not required just insert it lock it that's it so that is one type that is a reason it is called as zero insertion force lga line grid array so instead of holes the processor uh, base will have this is the motherboard side a uh, processor will be uh, kept over this particular grid so if you see line grid array it means uh, like a matrix it is arranged so it will have some embedded one uh, dots right so processor also will have this kind of uh, dots in a array structure so based on the corners um, you have to identify which place see here this uh, cut available so in the processor also you have to see the cut and place it here and you have a lid over here just lock it and right side also you have one lever so close the lever and put it here so it will get locked so it will not have any possibilities to move the Uh, processor here and there so these are the different uh, family of uh, processor this is mainly for intel so we are not mentioning anything from the amd 
okay because most of the time we used uh, intel processor so we are just showing the table from uh, intel family cpu cooling fan so here you are seeing the um, cpu and uh, on fan is provided here so why we are discussing about cpu fan over here which is very important now um, in the residence or um, offices where you have uh, no acs available facilities available so there is a possibility that uh, it is kept in a normal place and it will get uh, accumulated with the dust and other particles so normally processor is operating at a higher frequency so there is high heat dissipation from the processor so we need to uh, keep extracting the heat otherwise what will happen uh, processor will get overheated and it will stop functioning i'll tell you one real time scenario so what happened once you just for one user uh, in the organization once um, they power on the system it will work for 15 minutes or 20 minutes after that it will go for shutdown abrupt shutdown it will close the system that's it so user have to wait even uh, if uh, he is switching on the system it will not power on so he has to wait for 5 10 minutes then if you switch on the system will work so we got the complaint like that and we um, tried to understand what was the problem then we understood that the cpu fan was not rotating because of which the heat from the processor is becoming more and uh, that made the system to go down okay so that happens rarely right um, uh, the fan may stuck because of the dust or uh, loose connection wire connection or uh, the fan itself is gone uh, damaged anything can be but uh, fan has to work that is a very uh, core message here so if fan is not working it will go for uh, shutting down your system automatically so uh, you will have processor over to that you will have heat sink aluminum heat sink and then only we will be fixing the fan so that it is extracting the heat from the processor so uh, the important um, part here is the voltage in interviews they will be asking questions like what is the uh, power supply you are giving for um, a cpu cooling fan so it is 12 volt positive plus 12 volt and you have fan control so sometimes if you want to understand whether the system is working fine or not so you have to see whether the fan is rotating or not so if it fan rotates without monitor also you can say uh, the system is working fine you will also get single beep right so once post is completed you will get a single beep that also ensures everything is connected and working fine so that is how we understand the connectivities so next is a chipset so what is a chipset chipset is nothing but um, it is the um, heart of the uh, motherboard like we say a processor is a heart of the computer chipset is the heart of your motherboard and it is very important component we discussed earlier right so um, having high processor and high memory is not a big issue but if your motherboard chipset is not good um, then it's of no use in having the good quality of processor and um, uh, memory so we need to have a um, advanced um, chipsets now it is coming as an integrated one and it is integrating all the uh, process i mean all the uh, controllers uh, memory controller io control everything in the motherboard itself it is saving time and size of the motherboard is getting reduced and uh, heat dissipation also come down so this kind of um, uh, package is called as plastic quad form package plastic quad form package so the pattern so this motherboard chipset perform several functions like controlling the communication between the processor and different uh, external devices chipset controls the data transfer between your processor and um, uh, io devices okay so different uh, uh, things are available as a bridge okay so if this is an example of um, how chipset is working you have something called fsb which is laid between your processor and the chipset and the chipset is the core and uh, act as a key and it enables everybody to interact with the processor so chipset decides which is the highest priority to be given to processor for processing so it acts like a secretary to a processor and helps to uh, process it faster and get the output okay so it supports agp sata everything raid so it supports all the uh, communications so uh, we have two types of bridges one is north bridge and another is a south bridge so north bridge mainly used for connecting your graphic bus and the memory bus 
so the communication between a processor and uh, this graphics and memory will be happening through the north bridge um, the south bridge is um, mainly playing a role for communicating with uh, uh, hub i mean um, io controllers usb lan audio so uh, all the communication will happen via the secondary one that is uh, south bridge so both are important so mainly the north bridge is kept near to the processor so that it can have faster communication through fsb because it is going via your motherboard right so the length is becoming shorter so it will have faster communication south bridge will be nearer to the ide controllers or io controllers wherever you have the devices so to have communication with the io controllers uh, io devices quickly and fsb um, the speed of the fsb defines the uh, quality of a motherboard or chipset okay so if the speed is good then definitely your transaction between your processor and memory will processor and other components will happen faster and you can get a response quickly so uh, normally copying a file between one system to other system takes half an hour if the fsb is good at um, functioning it can be completed in 10 minutes of time so hub architecture a hub is available which controls the data flow between the core components of a system that's what we discussed now fsb so next is the QPA architecture. So apart from that uh, previous architecture, now what is there in QPA is um, Quick Path Interconnect. So more than the uh, FSB or FSB is being replaced uh, with the architecture. In the this is mostly seen in the AMD motherboards and AMD processor. Now it is available in the other uh, uh, manufacturers also. So what they have done is they they have split one processor into a multiple processor we call dual core processor or uh, quad core processor or multi core processor right so physically you'll have one processor but logically it will function as uh, four processors or more than that normally it is four so what happens is um, uh, yeah, a processor is functioning and processing the information right if you have multiple processor it will quickly process the functions and provides the output so uh, and along with that uh, a memory controller is also attached to a uh, attached to a processor so the transaction or um, data transfer between memory and processor is also um, made faster so that is the advantage of um, uh, the latest uh, chipset heat dissipation definitely there is a heat dissipation from the motherboard earlier we see uh, the dissipation from the processor through a cooling fan the components ic components since these are all working um, th this will be uh, emitting the heat right so you'll have a chassis fan so that will help you to um, move the uh, heat air out and uh, make it cool and uh, probably if you are in a ac room definitely that will sufficient and um, um, system will be in good condition but um, you normally in the residence or in the small organizations right they will dump the system into the corner of the table or any other place where there is no air circulation so those places the systems definitely will get faulty within one or two years even if you put high quality intel system because you keep it in a corner there is no air circulation because of heat dissipation uh, the uh, quality of uh, semiconductors the diodes and other uh, uh, transistor components become um, less and uh, it ends up its life so we have to take care of this heat dissipation memory support uh, motherboard supports uh, two types of memory uh, now it is sim and dim sim uh, single inline memory module and dual inline memory module so if you see in the motherboard uh, two different colors are available white and black there is a older type of motherboard so differentiate the uh, uh, type they have mentioned uh, in two colors so white color is a sim uh, which has single cut in the middle and that is also not exactly in the middle okay to avoid the wrong connection of memory module so if you put it in the exact middle even if you put it in the reverse order the memory module will get inserted right to avoid it it will be just moved or behind a mood moved away from the center point so you have to insert in the correct direction but sometimes the engineers they don't have a patience so what they will do they'll just press it forcefully and insert it that will damage the uh, uh, memory uh, memory uh, connector or the memory module itself It'll get damaged okay so you'll have to go for replacing it so to avoid that only they have provided so very slowly you have to um, uh, insert the memory module 
dual inline memory module um, how we differentiate is you had only one cut here in the middle whereas in case of dual inline memory module you'll have one cut in the middle just uh, behind the middle or um, the other cut one will be uh, uh, closer to the ending point so two cuts will be there so you, you here also you cannot reverse the um, uh, memory module and insert it right only in this uh, condition you have to insert the uh, memories okay so that is how you insert the memory modules graphic support so as we discussed earlier if at all you need a, a additional graphics card for a multimedia person or a media person so they can insert a new graphic card into the uh, any one of the io slots and they can start working with the graphical port uh, bias and cmos so bias is basic input output system so it is another important component of a motherboard because the motherboard firmware or the important configurations are available with the BIOS only. So it is a controller for motherboard. BIOS is a controller. So maximum instructions are kept in the BIOS. Uh, once you come power on, uh, it will be executing the uh, instructions written in the BIOS program. So the important thing in BIOS is bootstrap. So um, you have booting sequence enabled. Okay, so it will mention like first um, uh, boot sequence is hard, the second is uh, uh, CD-ROM, third is floppy, something like that. So we'll configure it. So based on that, once the system loads, the initiates, the post is running, so it will initiate a bootstrap. So bootstrap will check whether uh, uh, what is the first device available in the system and the BIOS configuration. It is mentioned as a, a, a hard disk. So it will look for the hard disk. Yeah, hard disk is available. Uh, as for the post report so it will reach the hard disk and uh, look for the boot.ini file from that file um, the operating system will get start loaded so it will be a triggering factor for loading the operating system then onwards the operating system sequence will take care and uh, the operating system itself will fully control the uh, computer so that is the function of a bootstrap so what happens is um, sometimes you now while installing the operating system we'll change the boot sequence first it will be cd-rom second is hard disk third is floppy so when the bootstrap loads it finds that a cd-rom is the person who is going to help in uh, booting the system so it uh, points out to the cd-rom and uh, finds the booting files in the CD, cd and then it boots it to the uh, operating system uh, then we start with the installation of the operating system right that is how we proceed so here uh, what happens is after the installation we have to remove the cd and then change the sequence to hard disk as a first one suppose you forget to uh, remove the cd and you forget to change the op option what will happen so nothing uh, major will happen so what you have to do is once it, it says this press any key to continue the loading of uh, operating system from the cd then you have to ignore it so it will directly uh, skip that one it will go for the secondary storage from hard disk it will load the operating system okay so otherwise you can go to motherboard uh, bias settings and uh, choose the ide option i mean booting option change that uh, booting option to uh, hard disk so even though you have a cd inside the uh, 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 cd rom you do not worry about it because the first boot is um, your hard disk second boot is only um, cd rom if at all any problem with the hard disk then it will look for ways from the uh, cd rom so there are different type of manufacturers available one is award phoenix and ami uh, there are a lot of available but we are just showing you three bias and cmos so once bias boots it runs the post so this is very important question for interview just make a note of it post is nothing but power on self test the meaning itself is clarifying what is the purpose of it once you power on okay the BIOS is running the self-test. It is programmed like that. Nothing is uh, uh, different. So it is programmed like that. Self self evaluation or self checking. So the program will run and it will go and verify all the devices whether it is working fine or not. Your hard disk, your monitor, keyboard, mouse, um, whatever it is available, will just send the instruction and get the output and ensure that everything is working fine if there is any issue you will get a beep sound or you will get a error message in the screen based on that you can take action say memory is not working properly you will get a 
continuous beeps or uh, if everything is goes fine you will get a single beep so that ensures that your components is fine and it is starting the booting operation okay so that is the power on self test so uh, it will be referring the configurations of a bias so major portion of the configurations are all the configurations from bias it will be returned to the um, uh, ram called cmos ram complementary metal oxide uh, semiconductor that is a expansion of cmos so it will be available in the cmos ram it is a volatile memory please note these points cmos expansion i have given now complementary metal oxide semiconductor and uh, it is a volatile memory so what is a volatile memory um, when the power goes off the data will also get wiped so that is the volatile memory your ram okay what is bias bias is a rom r o m e prom or rom whatever it is but it is you what you have to understand it is permanent once it is written it will be permanent so there is no need to change anything so whatever update we are doing is updated getting updated in the cmos ram only okay so you are seeing the battery also here right the voltage of uh, cmos battery is 3 volt so this also you have to note for desktop service engineers in the interviews they'll ask this kind of questions what is the power power supply from cmos battery what is the purpose of cmos battery all those uh, details they'll be asking so you have to make a note so it is 3 volt um, lithium battery kind of thing and uh, the purpose of it uh, cmos memory has to be uh, kept live because it is holding the configuration of a bias additional configuration enhanced configurations of a bias about the device right so sometimes now we give a password for the uh, password for the um, uh, computer bias password we call it as bias password or setup password so if you want to block somebody using your desktop in your office you give your own bias password so they cannot break it right uh, so you can use only by yourself that is called bias password so if at all you forget the bias password what will happen this is also asked in interviews so what is the solution for uh, forgetting password of uh, bias how will you break the operating system or break the system so what you have to do you have to open the cabinet and first option is remove the cmos battery it will clear all the contents in the uh, system and also the password uh, it is not the hard disk content right it is only bias configuration items so the only that is getting erased so obviously your password is also erased so now you can log in without any uh, boot password that is point one point two is there is a, a jumper available in the motherboard two pins will be available so you have to um, uh, connect that jumper pin with the help use of jumper jumper is nothing but um, uh, you could see i think in this picture uh, below the bias you have some pins okay so they will write it somewhere in the middle so as a jumper pin so you have to short this two pins any any two pins right uh, i'm not able to uh, point it out here but uh, the motherboards they'll mention it which is the same as reset pin so once you touch with the help of screwdriver both the things are you have a jumper so once you connect it with the jumper and switch on once it will get short circuit and uh, i mean it will not damage anything only thing is it will flush the uh, uh, details available in the Mm, uh, CMOS RAM that is only happen okay so don't worry about other components so the password will get clear so this is the uh, this is how you have to handle the password uh, issues with the bias okay this is very important question asked in the interviews because most of the places you go uh, they call like uh, uh, I, I am not able to log into the system my system is locked so what I can do um, either you can guide them through remote um, if at all they are able to open and see otherwise we have to go and do it okay so once that post is um, in, uh, initiated and uh, it will be giving the result like everything is working and it will give the result to the operating system from then on the operating system will take care of it so we just discuss about uh, password and all over here So earlier periods, uh, BIOS is purely on the read only. You are not able to do any uh, changes. If at all you wanted to uh, modify any contents, uh, any programs, either you replace the BIOS IC or you can 
I mean, in the olden days, only ROM, you cannot do anything. If you want to have version 2, version 3 in the uh, motherboard, so you remove the old ROM, ROM and uh, insert the new ROM. That's it. Nowadays, you have PROM, EPROM, EEPROM, all those kind of um, flash bias available. So what you can do, you can remove or you can remove the BIOS um, IC and uh, you have something called BIOS flasher. So you can insert it. Um, so that will flash all the information that is version 1 to version 1.1, 1.2. You can upgrade the BIOS. Okay. That is called BIOS flashing. Okay. Flash BIOS or BIOS flashing. Okay. So you can uh, update those informations or from the operating system also you can uh, push the configuration to the BIOS. Nowadays you are getting firmware update and everything right for the motherboard. So it is directly getting downloaded from the computer operating system to the BIOS directly. So that is also possible. Or through USB you can do it or through CD you can do it. So anything is okay. This is ID and SATA connectors. How to connect the hard disk. Um, uh, you have 40 pin ID interface. Uh, you can uh, use this cable to connect the hard disk and along with the CD-ROM. So the lengthy part will be connected to the motherboard blue color. Um, gray color and black color will be used accordingly for hard disk and CD-ROM. So one will be acting as a primary and another will be acting as a secondary. So this is the PATA parallel ATA. So this is how it is shown. So here you see you know, four pins are there for power supply connection and 40 pins are there for uh, data transfer and this section is the jumpers okay so you can see uh, this is placed here it means it is master so you need not worry about the portion it will be written in, inside the uh, uh, area you can just see m or slave means yes sir. so like that they have written so you want to make this uh, hard disk as a master then you put it in uh, this place by default it will be in the master place so the CD-ROM by default will be in the slave place normally uh, hard disk takes the preference so that is a concept of master slave and you have 34 pin uh, uh, floppy connector also but now it is of no use okay so nobody is using the floppy drives they get uh, uh, gbs of uh, space in the pen drive itself so id cable uh, 40 cable 40 or 40 connectors okay so this is how you connect it uh, device 0 and device 1 so i told just now Blue color, you have to insert it in the motherboard. Gray color, you have to use it for slave ID. And uh, the black color, you have to use it for master ID. I mean, um, if at all you want to connect two hard disks, which one you wanted to act as a master, you can decide. SATA interface. So apart from the ID, we have SATA connector also. So normally they are giving four. Earlier it was two, now it is four. So you can uh, connect uh, for hard disk here, but uh, SATA connectors you cannot connect like your ID. One cable, one connector, one hard disk. That's it. You have two hard disk, three hard disk. You connect it directly to the other connectors. You cannot take parallel connection or sequential connection from one port. There is no cables also available. So uh, there will be one cable with two uh, port, two sides. One should be connected on the device. One should be connected on the motherboard. The best advantage uh, of SATA hard disk is more than ID, this has a higher data transfer capability. Uh, uh, we have different versions in this SATA also based on the motherboard configurations. But what you have to understand earlier it was ID, now we are using SATA. So in interview they will ask what is the difference. You have to mention it. Um, in case of ID, uh, you have 40 pin connector and um, you have you can connect two devices in a cable. and uh, it can have master slave configurations between the devices it can decide which needs to be master and which needs to be slave and data transfer rate is medium or slow in case of sata you have two or four ports available in the sata motherboard uh, in one port you can connect only one hard disk and uh, the major difference here is the data throughput is more in case of sata than the uh, id so this is how you have to address in the interviews so difference between id and um, uh, sata sas and hba sas interface it is an interface used for hard disk and other data devices known as a sas serial attached scsi 
So uh, from IDE, the advanced form is SATA. From SCSI, the advanced form is SAS. Okay, that's a, a simple uh, understanding. Okay. So in case of SAS, you can connect 128 devices. Okay. So like your SCSI interface here also, you can connect 128 hard disk into it. So normally this is not required for desktop. See at the maximum you connect uh, two hard disks. That's it. Not more than that. No. Now you are getting two terabyte hard disk in laptops. Why you go for second hard disk? How much data you save? If at all you dump a lot of movies, um, otherwise there is no requirement of uh, having um, terabytes of space, right? So we not go for the uh, SCSI in desktops or laptops. Only this is used in service because uh, company will have a lot of data. Mainly they will store backup and all, right? So you need to have more space for um, storing the uh, informations. HBA interface, apart from ID and SATA, third-party disk controllers cards can also be used with the motherboards. Host bus adapter, so something like uh, AGP or additional facilities, additional uh, configurations, uh, joystick connection or any other um, uh, interface, right? So that will be called as a host bus adapter. So now we have come to end. So we have discussed about uh, the important uh, concepts, uh, North Bridge, South Bridge and other uh, uh, devices connections. So um, this ends the part two of motherboard technologies. We'll see more in part three. Thank you very much.